was the first section of Bach's Invention Number no. 3 in D major. This is a piece that is a delight to play, and I think it's about play. It's about the two hands talking to each other, first doing steps, and then skips, and then leaps, and juggling motives back and forth. There's a lot to tell you about this, and I can't wait to get started. So, in the key of D major, here is the scale. It's an open key. I always see yellow and sunshine with D major. It's optimistic and bright. And taking the first five notes of the scale is the five finger pattern of D major. And that is exactly how Bach has built the opening material, the subject. What's interesting to me and unusual about this invention, along with the next one, number four in D minor, those are the parallel D major, D minor, they were both written in 3-8 time. And this one has a subject that's eight beats long, almost a full three measures. Starting with the five finger pattern, this is how the subject is constructed. It starts on the upbeat. Right away that means something. We're light. We're, we're already on our toes. Ready to play. Ready to dance. So here is the three and measure one. of the fifth is your full subject. So I'm going to play the soprano alone and we go on a little bit longer than that. And the bass entry comes in with identical material. Let me play these with the hands together. This is also a very good way of familiarizing yourself with the patterns and how they feel in the fingers. Equal writing was one of the huge things Bach was after in developing good musicians and good keyboard players. So each hand would be equal in their articulation and clarity. them together like that and he doesn't even let them each get a full turn. The bass interrupts like this. Can't wait! I want to get in. I want the action right now. It gives a, a character to it. Always what's the character? And this is about impetuous fun for me. That's how I feel when I play it. Taking a closer look at our opening subject the upbeat is one unit. I divided this into three units. Measure one is this unit with the stepping motive. Those seconds and then down. I call that motive A. The next measure I call motive B. Motive A is going to be used all the way through the piece, and he's going to vary it with different inventions. So let's now go on and see how he varies right away. Let me play the first two lines as you will hear with the hands together. actually modulated the end of that system into the key of A major, which is the dominant. And how he gets us there is very, very clever. Starting with the soprano in measure 5, listen to this. And then down a step. Doesn't that sound an awful lot like motive A? Well, it is. 
it's just expanded. Instead of seconds, seconds, he's giving thirds. right there tells you I don't think that we're in D major anymore. The left hymn, the bass, when it comes in he's off. He's I'm done with D major, we think. This holding of the A, the dominant precedes that, very, very interesting, in measure 9, the soprano has goes back to motive A, with the stepwise. And the next measure 10, the bass answers just a step above. Now if I bring that left hand D up the octave, this is really what's in there. Starting measure 9 with the soprano, measure 10, and that is a three measure cadence that he's going to use all the way through the piece. Five different times he's going to use that cadence. We'll get into more later on that in more detail. So starting our second line, oh, feel the joy of this opening. It's The thirds open you, and going down to the dominant. The hand expanding in the left hand into the broken octave has a different feel than the tightly coiled breaks out to this. chart. It actually is on two different 11 by 17 horizontal landscape pieces of paper. And you can get these, order your whole chart, as digital downloads from my website sallychristianmusic.com. Yours comes black and white, but you do get color in another form, which we'll get to very, very soon. But this is the entire piece all laid out absolutely beautifully in the sections of the piece that it is. I engraved it this way to show, for instance, in our first line here, I call these systems. We have our subject material, which I put in red, in our opening key of D major. Our system two modulated to the A. We had motive a expanded on system two. Our broken bass in the left hand here, the broken octaves. This was actually a two measure sequence. What he does and repeats it. The left hand is just holding. Not, not to be found in any other edition. Seven measures in length. Four for your two measure sequence and three for the cadence that wraps up that system beautifully on the two A's at the beginning of system three. Now going on to what is coming next. We know we just modulated to the dominant 
in A major with the two A's an octave apart. Now I'm going to play the bass by itself. What comes next? Starting in measure 12. And then the soprano answers in the next measure on the B. That doesn't sound like A major anymore, does it? Well, it isn't. And that's one of the things Bach is doing a lot in this piece. These quick changes. We think we've arrived in a new key. We only stay for a minute, or a measure. And we're off right away developing a new key, a new concept, a new game to play. Remember, our subject began on the upbeat, on the third beat. Three and one. Those are only two notes before motive A. What would happen if we extended that upbeat by three more notes? And well, that's exactly what Bach did. And I call it the extended upbeat or the extended lead-in. And he has yet another variation now, and it's a two-measure phrase. And that's what we heard at the beginning of our third system. So with that extended lead-in two-measure phrase, I'm going to play that element with the hands talking to each other. Left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. And just listen to this beautiful, balanced conversation. And listen to the harmonies. phrases. That's not all there is to it. We get counterpoint. So I'm now going to play with the two hands the rest of that section which sounds like this. Starting in measure 13. That's what I mean about the playfulness. The joy, the skipping, almost like juggling. So if we put the hands together now, listen to the complexity of this. Looking back at our chart here, I ended right here, measure 19. But look how much more we have left to go before this System 3 has finished. This system is a total of 12 measures in length. That's astounding. I, have, uh, I didn't believe it would have been possible to do this until we got in this wonderful digital age of being able to re-engrave music on a page this wide. And this is the only edition that you'll find it like this. Most of the time, it will take three lines to get this entire 12 measures. So you don't ever really see that this is all one paragraph. So if we have eight here and then five here, it's a total of 13. So why did I say 12? Well, that's a good reason for it. Very clever of Mr. Bach here in measure 19, the soprano right here does double duty. Not only does it finish the two measure phrase preceding in measure 18, but it begins a new pattern, which I call the motive A descending sequence. You see how many times he's using motive A here? This is spectacular. Starting in measure 19, let me play the soprano by itself, and I'm going to call out the beat notes. That's the note on beat one. F sharp. E. D. C sharp.
Very, very ingenious how he's done this. All in mode of A. Three times in a row. It's a sequence. Underneath that, the bass is doing something equally interesting. of this writing. Do you hear how that's speaking? How these minor harmonies now have a whole different color than our opening bright, tightly coiled D major. Almost longing. Now, this is so beautiful here. Starting measure 19. Actually, this is a tie. But we are still ending on the two Bs an octave apart exactly as he ended the previous system. You see, he's using this as a template, ending with the new key area with the hands playing the single new tonic note. Simple, but profound. He's not ready yet to leave this beautiful two-measure extended upbeat motive sequence. He wants to do it some more. So starting on our fourth system, the bottom of page one, I'm going to play for you just the two-measure phrase of the extended motive starting in the soprano. On the second sixteenth note, it always starts not on the beat but mm, with a little lift. One. see what he does do, I'd like to point out to you that interval of the ascending sixth that he's using again, what power that has. All of that busyness we just had in that 12 measure line three, system three, we need to catch our breath. We need to just stop moving for a while and we get a chance here with this. And he holds that. He's going to take us back to A major. Now I'm going to show you my favorite part of the entire chart package. It is called the satellite view. You actually get three satellite views in your whole package. This one marked up in the colors that you see. I love working with color because I give different sections the same color. <clears throat> and I can see very clearly the larger sections of how the piece is constructed. So we just finished right here at the bottom of our page one with that G sharp in the bass. This is all the beginning of page two. Notice that in the previous two systems here, this wonderful 12 measure system three 
and the eight measure system four I put all around the blue box. <clears throat> the reason I did is because it's all built on this extended to measure mode of A sequences. Look at how beautiful this looks here. The bass answers soprano. The bass answers soprano. Then we have in the yellow box the five measure descending B minor five finger pattern ending on the single B's. One more series of extended motive soprano, bass, soprano, bass, and now here we are, the beginning of page two, and the action starts again. We didn't get very long at all to catch our breath. By the way, you also get a black and white version, so you can study this without any colors if you prefer. I've had a lot of feedback from you over the last few years since these have been up, and unanimously people want the color. So I've made sure that with all of these engravings that I continue to do, I give you a color view of your satellite view. It's very, very helpful. So starting now on our page two, I can't wait to share this with you. Here we are. Let's take the left hand alone at the top of two, measure 32. <laughs> now so you can hear how harmonious this is. Despite all of the different references of mode of A, mode of B, overlapping, it sounds seamless. And what do you know? Again, the single new tonic. This time two octaves apart. This is the beginning of system two on our page two. Now let me play this bass alone right here in measure 38. See, we ended on A, we think we're A major. How long will we stay here? Well, not long at all if we already have a G natural here. Do you know what he's doing there? He's 
giving us another one of these motivate descending sequences outlining beat notes. Let me name them out loud as I play them. So now over that, in measure 39, the interest thickens even more. Look what the soprano does, measure 39. It's climbing up. It's climbing up what? Climbing up the D major scale. I like to do this to take these down to their simple uh, nucleus notes and play it like this in measure 39. Now let's add a little bit more. Let's put some skips in the right hand here. And he does this. He actually writes in the manuscript these little turns. They're cambiatas is the name. And they go like this. Instead of the A, he... adds just a little lightness to it. It adds the skip. Here it is without the cambiata. And here with. Just so much playfulness in this. Hands together there. Listen to this. like that and get them into your deeper listening. You will love them too. Tenths and sixths are magnificent intervals. Something I wanted to show you that I found, back to our satellite view, the genius of Bach. This piece sounds so simple and easy and effortless and underneath is enormous complexity. Remember here in our 12 measure system 3, we had the five measures here with the descending B minor uh, outline, five finger pattern. He's doing the same thing here at the beginning of this system 6. Exactly the same material. Let me compare those two for you. Being able to go back and forth. Here's another benefit of the charts. You can see the yellow box right here. You can see the yellow box right here. Go ahead and mark your music in colored pencil if that helps you. Now let me compare these two yellow boxes. Measure 19 with the lead-in of measure 18. Now measure 38 with the lead-in for the bass. absolute perfect balance and equality in writing and for the hands, for the parts. Nobody gets preferential treatment in Bach. Both hands, both voices get equal treatment. That's one of the uh, most unusual things about these inventions in Sinfonias. Okay, we are about ready to have one more a bit, a bit of genius here. Coming out of this Instead of approaching it from below, as in the beginning of the piece, with the upbeat, 
He's approaching it from the descending scale. Just wonderful. So what happens when we play this? We get the feeling of, for instance, if I were playing and giving you a metaphor, going down a water slide, and you're, 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 the momentum is carrying you, and before you know it, you're covered in water. Before you know it, you're covered in the subject again. It's just splendid. <laughs> close of the piece here. Let's go back to this satellite view, just absolutely beautiful. Something that I found very, very helpful when I learn a piece that has what I call a musical switch. The first time it goes one way, coming out of our two measure opening material here, the soprano the first time coming out of that same opening material goes up the fourth and stays on the D. The bass is identical. It's doing the subject both times here. <clears throat> play the two back and forth and I highly recommend this. This is what I say to myself starting at the opening. First time. Second time. So practice that a lot. That's the second time. D major and that is where we're going. We're D major, we're back home to that, and equal treatment, this is our seven measure system. Oh, so beautiful, those leaps, how can you just not resist it? Just incredible. Exact balance writing. A major, the first green box, seven measures. D major, the last green box, seven measures. Pretty much identical material, a little bit different right in here. Study that. But this first four measures is just inverted over here and in a different key. But there's that beautiful balance. Look at this. It's almost like bookend, second from the end. You see the absolute splendid symmetry in the, of, of composition here. Which brings me now to your third satellite view. One of the things Bach is trying to teach us is to acquire an appreciation and taste for the elements of composition. And I made this final satellite view based on Motive A dialogue entries. That sounds like a long word. It simply means showing in the piece all of the three measure cadences the, that end your systems. The first one was right here. E to A modulated to A major. The end of this system. Five to one modulating to this system, B minor. This one, E, modulating back to A major, the dominant. So coming to this system here, second to the last system here. Now, if we were true to the formula, we would have gone to the D which he does down here. So we know we're getting that. This I was just amazed to see that it's identical material at the end of this system, the end of that system. Do you see how clear the layout of this is? And this is what Bach knew when he was composing. 
He knew all of these things. To me, this is like, can't see the forest for the trees. These things are so basic. This is your forest, your three major cadences that punctuate the ends of all these systems. I wasn't even aware of that because I was so, for, until very recently, I was so busy on all the trees, all the details that we've covered so far in the lesson. And you need both. And by playing just these out of context, like this, so exquisite here, is the first one. Let's drop back down to the second to the last one because here's the surprise. It's really down here. And then the final one. Well, that will be a very helpful thing for you to study that. So let me play now the close starting with measure 47. We're in D major. We don't leave D major, but listen for that sneak appearance of G for just one measure. playing. I had never watched babies play, baby squirrels, and how they play, almost like watching kittens. They already know how to pounce and do their stalking motions. This is, you know, in the DNA. Well, these little squirrels were going around and chasing each other and running around the tree trunks and jumping from branch to branch, and it was just amusing. It was, I, I could not keep my eyes off of it for 10 minutes, and that's the idea behind a piece like this, this tightly coiled dance or chase, game of chase between the voices, between the parts. Now, tempi is one last thing I'll tell you. There's a huge range. Bach didn't give us any tempo indications. It's up to you to settle in on the tempo that you want, and they're all valid. You just are going to need to vary your touch and your dynamics to sustain whatever tempo you choose. The same with articulation of these. I happen to like to swing it and the lightness of it. It's not written that way. You could do, but I don't think that's as nice. So pay attention to, to your touch and to the balance of voices on this piece all about play. So I hope this has been helpful. I've loved sharing it with you. And I wish you many hours of playful and productive practice on your invention in D major. Thank you.